that, they will finish lap number five here in Brazil. A huge crowd on him, and it is a very gay crowd to Tyrrell later on this year. Quick look there. It looked like one of the Tyrrells closed down and, and took the nose off. It's center, isn't it? And, of course, Saturo Nakajima is going to need an armed car to get out of this racetrack at the end of the day. The yeah, you better use the same one that Jean-Marie Bless used. Let's <laughs> go an armed guard together. Going to get out of Interlagos. You better go straight up if you're going to mess with any of the Brazilians in this race today. His brakes were absolutely almost liquid. They were so hot. This is a heavy braking circuit, right, David? The, it is a, a very heavy braking circuit. One of those heavy braking points is just coming up now for Gerhard Berger. But the thought of Andrea, a brakeless Andrea de Chedris, is sort of a good script for a horror movie, really. It wouldn't be the high point of most drivers' career when they came upon that. A yacht, one of the schönsten in the hafen. The schönste, the teuerste is probably the Atlantis from Yachos with Hubschrauber on board, wurde jetzt an den amerikanischen Multimilliardär Trump verkauft für 36 Millionen Dollar. Er will sie weiterverkaufen für 68 Millionen Dollar. So the designers are always trying to make the cars smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, even now the midgets, the Alan Prost of this world, designers are now making the cockpits too small for them. There is the Frenchman. The man with the biggest nose in the Grand Prix world who actually once returned a hire car after they'd had a race in it and it had been very badly smashed up. And uh, when the girl at the hire car desk complained about it, he said, uh, it was not my fault, and look what it's done to my nose. the track was still damp for the pre-qualifiers as Aguri Suzuki discovered to his cost as he went offline whilst trying to warm up his tyres, having just changed to slicks. The LaRue span into the tyre wall at around 135 miles an hour, but the Japanese driver managed to jog back to the pits unharmed and qualify with the spare car in fourth and last place on the last lap of the session. The Brazilian could do no better than third fastest, a lowly position for him, but he still found time to celebrate as the McLaren chef had baked a cake to celebrate his 100th Grand Prix. Senna took great care in carving himself out a slice and then showed slightly less respect as he plastered team manager Joe Ramirez, the Mexican member of the McLaren team. Pit stop. Alesi, I believe. Alesi. Alesi, French for after you. Hardly appropriate in a Grand Prix driver. Watch the reaction from the people behind the car. Hi, 
Hey, nice of those gloves cost about 200 bucks a pair. Well, let's see if he pitches the helmet. There you can see he was Mr. Popular around here. Yeah. I don't think he'd go quite that far. Well, recently, Ayrton Senna and Nigel Mansell shared a podium, and Senna expressed some discouragement about the transmission and drive in his McLaren. Nigel leaned over and said, you can have the one in my car if you want. Senna said, maybe for the future, not for right now. Well, it has certainly been an interesting Formula One season thus far. There is Cesare Fiorio accepting the trophy on behalf of the Ferrari team. Behind him, Tom Walkinshaw. Hold on to it there, Cesare. Tom Walkinshaw, chairman of the Silverstone Circuit. I don't know, it was done uh, 20 years ago, I have no idea. <laughs> no, I done myself when I was racing go-kart. Funny you should say that, because I was just talking to Nigel Mansell last night at the dinner table, which I believe is an expression that commentators should always use, and he said that getting into these cars is like pulling on a pair of trousers, and you can, very, you can tell the difference. There we see the drink bottle. That's on, Paolo Barilla. I still cannot imagine how those guys can use those. Actually, in his case, that bottle's got pasta in it. Formule 1, Grand Prix de Belgique. <laughs> Never know who you're going to run into in Belgium, oh, do you? We wondered where he was, and he was here in Belgium. King looks along. pretty good, I think, for a guy who's been dead for 13 years. That, of course, was not... <laughs> that is not Elvis, either. <laughs> that was Mr. Felici Bai, an Elvis impersonator. John Alisi, he just had the front wing replaced on, on his Tyrrell, and they're asking us to get off the grid, but the point we want to make is there are many cars that are being pushed into this particular race with a great deal of maintenance done to them, a lot of aerodynamics, rear wings, front wings, suspension work, has to be very unsettling for these drivers to go out there and just repeat what ended up in an accident with a lot of new parts on the car. Pushing that wheel isn't going to help much, bud. The second start was even more extreme. Uh, the driver was out of the car. The car was pretty much off the circuit. There's certainly no need to stop the second race. Perhaps we should just keep having starts until there's a Ferrari in the lead. Wouldn't that be interesting? Last week we saw him crying. This week he was absolutely furious. I've never seen him so mad. He's quite a gentle person, actually. He was absolutely mad about what happened to him in turn one. These two gentlemen, Senna and Frost, are confirmed in their contracts for next year. And we told you a story last week about some details of Senna's contract that had, that had sneaked out or been leaked out, dealing with expenses for his private jet and a private motorhome at the racetrack and so forth. Ron Dennis, the McLaren team manager, came forward to say that that was all absolute rubbish and a story leaked by a certain famous foreign driver with the McLaren team, a world champion who decided he would have some fun with the press, including those of us here at ESPN. We have Nelson Pinquet's left front tire here. This is the one that takes all the wear. As you can see, it's actually in pretty good shape. I just hope that, you know, we don't have any mechanical problems and we can have a good race to finish on. All right, I'll let you get back to your uh, lovely friend there, Nigel. <laughs> I'll go back to you, Kenneth Jackie. Well, Nelson Pinquet, tremendous victory. The oldest, oldest man in the race. How hard was the race? 